Eyewitness News is honoring those who served with Veterans Voices. Hello and welcome to Veterans Voices. I'm Nick Toma. I'm Candace Kelly. We owe a great deal of gratitude and respect to the men and women who valiantly fought for our freedoms and those who continue to fight. In the next half hour, we will highlight our area veterans and programs that honor their service. Pennsylvania is actually home to the fourth largest veteran population in the United States. While most continue their life strengthened by their military experience, some run afoul of the law because of it. Eyewitness News reporter Mark Killer explains how those vets are helped by Veterans Court. Here's somebody that will help you go through the process to continue your treatment. Pennsylvania Army National Guard veteran Dave Reagan is founder and president of Veterans Promise. It connects vets with services and serves as a sanctuary for those struggling with their invisible scars. Reagan has his own PTSD and depression after deployments to Bosnia and Iraq. After his discharge, he became suicidal and had a personal run in with police in 2014. But instead of a criminal record, it was huge. It was truly huge. He found redemption in veterans court. Whether it's drugs or alcohol, whether it's family stuff, whether it's veteran stuff, they will find a way to help you. In 2009, Lackawanna County became the first in Pennsylvania to offer veterans court. Veterans court is meant to bring the person accountable for what they've done, but also make sure that they're accountable for their treatment so that we're looking at the underlying problem. Lackawanna County President Judge Michael Barre says the offending vet, who he describes as high risk, high need, is paired with a mentor who's also a veteran. So it's a whole different environment than any of our other treatment courts because now you have veterans helping veterans. Uh, and it's a really unique uh, type of setup. We have the VA here in the courtroom. The Wilkesbury VA Medical Center has three veterans justice outreach specialists who play a supporting role in helping rehabilitate the offending vet through Veterans Court. Oftentimes those veterans who don't have that structure um, tend to maybe not come to the VA as they should and get that con the continuity of care you know, that will help them improve their lives. Vets going through Veterans Court appear weekly in Judge Barace's courtroom for a minimum of 18 months, all the time undergoing counseling and treatment in their recovery. Even after vets graduate from Veterans Court, they maintain a connection to help keep them on a path of being active contributing members of their community. The goal is to make sure they're not only obeying the law, but also effectively coping with their crisis. Often what we do is the uh, after your first six months and year, and to have the charges dismissed and expunged, we require them to come back. A clean slate and a fresh start. You're given the opportunity to have this stuff go away. Thanks to Veterans Court. It really is uh, good to see someone like Dave who now has embraced recovery, but also has embraced the idea of I'm a veteran. I was helping Veterans Court. What can I do to help other veterans? For Veterans Voices, Mark Hiller, Eyewitness News. Judge Tom Munley started Veterans Court in Lackawanna County a decade ago, and it's proven to be highly successful. The recidivism rate for vets completing the program is less than 4% compared to nearly 50% in the general population. Now you heard Mark mention Veterans Promise in his story, a group of local veterans who made a promise to advocate for all veterans returning home. Yeah, they are based out of Dixon City. They offer suicide prevention help as well as drug and alcohol support groups. They host a wall of heroes vigil every month, a reminder to those who have lost family members in military that there is support past the pain. We have more about the program for you on PAHomepage.com. Janice Gavern is a proud veteran from Susquehanna County who is always eager to share stories of women and their service to our country. Now she's using a military-style ambulance to enhance her presentation and educate a new generation. And we invite you to check out PAHomepage.com for more stories from here and across the nation. And you can find it under our Veterans Voices link. Eyewitness News is honoring those who served with Veterans Voices. Janice Gavern is a United States Air Force Vietnam era veteran from Susquehanna County who is very proud of her service to our country. This retired Air Force Reserve Captain's new mission includes sharing women veteran stories and showing off her military ambulance. Eyewitness News reporter Cody Butler spent some time with her talking about her military career. There were a lot of women 
in the military, and the government tried very hard not to emphasize it. Janice Gavern is an Air Force veteran. Growing up in Scranton in the 1950s, she never thought she would join the military until college was not an option. I couldn't afford it um, on my own, and the military was one way of earning the GI Bill. Janice enlisted in 1967 not only to get a degree, but to demonstrate that women can defend the United States. Even though we weren't required to defend it. So this was a way to do that and to do something to support our country. The now Susquehanna County resident did just that for more than two decades in the Air Force Reserve, retiring as an Air Force Reserve captain. Through school and training, Janice became a tech sergeant. For 14 years, she specialized in logistic planning for equipment that was being developed 20 years out. That was very interesting to me and very rewarding. Yeah, I mean, you felt like you were really accomplishing something. Until a health concern. I was devastated. I really Janice thought, developed I, asthma. I, now, you wouldn't think too much of asthma, but at the time, that medically disqualified me for worldwide service. So basically, I got a letter in the mail one day that said, uh, thank you for your service, go away. From there, she didn't talk to anyone about her time in the Air Force. Five years later, she opened up when Janice and her daughter made a spontaneous decision to attend a Native American powwow. Now, if you've never been to a powwow, and I hadn't, I did not realize how much they support the military. Ahead of a traditional dance, they asked, Is anybody out there a veteran? If you're a veteran, we invite you to come up and to dance with us. I look at my daughter, I go, I was a veteran. That moment had a profound impact on the retired captain. Nobody had ever thanked me for my service before. So I wanted to do something eventually to pass that along. Shortly after, she joined the American Legion Gardner Warner Post 154 near Montrose. For seven years, Janice has been collecting stories of women veterans, many that were untold. I wanted something to catch your attention. She purchased a 1967 Vietnam era ambulance to highlight an important tool used by women serving at war. They thought that the American people were not ready to hear about women who were involved in the military. Janice now uses the display to recognize the proud service of women in the military, including her own. For Veterans Voices, I'm Cody Butler, Eyewitness News. Janice devotes her time to helping women veterans in her new position as a vice chairwoman for the Women's Veterans Committee, Pennsylvania American Legion. And go over to PAHomepage.com under the Veterans Voices link for a story on how the Susquehanna County Career and Technology Center helped Janice refurbish her ambulance. He is our voice for veterans here at Eyewitness News. Coming up, I'll sit down with Judge Tom Munley to talk about his service to our country and his continued commitment to help veterans in northeastern Pennsylvania. And on PAHomepage.com, a look at the many volunteers, including current service members, it has taken to reopen and maintain the Pearl Harbor Memorial in Hawaii. Eyewitness News is honoring those who served with Veterans Voices. You probably know Judge Tom Munley as an advocate for local vets through his Veterans Views segment seen on Eyewitness News. But his history of service actually began as a 22-year-old Army private thrust into the middle of the Vietnam War. The Jessup High School teacher went to basic training in South Carolina in 1969, and just three weeks after arriving in Vietnam, he was facing down the enemy in a rice paddy in pitch black midnight. It was his first time he'd ever fired a gun in anger. My squad leader said, they're coming at us, there's movement. He, he was looking at infrared, we used to have infrared lights. He said, they're coming at us. So he said, don't shoot until I shoot. I could hear them in the rice paddies coming closer and closer and closer. Then when they were closer, he, he started firing and we all started firing. And then I fired for about five or eight seconds. I turned around and looked to my right, nobody was there. Turned around and looked to my left, nobody was there. They all took off. He'd survive that close call to spend 11 months in Vietnam, eventually becoming a squad leader. 
Like many Americans, Munley was conflicted about America's role on the world stage. So he wrote a letter on toilet paper titled, Infantryman Asks Why, stating why he didn't believe in the war. It was published in the Scranton Times. Munley says while he was ambivalent about the war, he never wavered in his support for his fellow soldiers. I'm trying to help my soldiers stay alive because I became a leader after I was there several months and I tried to keep my soldiers alive. But the dangers of war were ever present and Munley, like a lot of soldiers, lost friends in the fight. I was talking to one guy and Nick, I was talking to him, he showed me a picture of his wife and kids. We both got up to walk. Somebody called me and I turned around and walked away. He stepped on a booby trap. I, would have, I was right next to him, he got blown to smithereens. Munley used the GI Bill to get his law degree, but his Vietnam experience stayed with him forever. He readily admits it made him a better person and judge. And the lawyers just say to me, don't you get upset? Don't you get nervous before your trials? I said, nervous? How about going out on patrol and having people shooting at you with the, I used to hear bullets whizzing over my head. I got, I got stung by a, by, by a, a scorpion. How about, getting, how about getting stung by a scorpion? How about, how about that stuff? So, In the middle of nowhere where this maybe Yeah, nothing. so this stuff is nothing. And with veterans' views, he has the platform to keep the promise he made to his fellow soldiers on the other side of the world. We're all in this together. We, we answer every veteran's question. We get them, we help hundreds and hundreds of vets, Nick, every month that call us. And we're getting them help with their benefits, help with housing, help with the Genome Early Center to get them. So we're doing our job. And we should mention that Judge Munley is suffering several effects from exposure to Agent Orange in Vietnam, including prostate cancer and blood cancer. And you can see Veterans Views every day on Eyewitness News at 530. We also have a web extra with more of Judge Munley's story on PAHomepage.com. A diary found tucked away tells the first-hand account of a young military man's experiences in World War I. His family shares a story coming up. And now under the Veterans Voice link on PAHomepage.com, how service dogs are changing the lives of American heroes. Eyewitness News is honoring those who served with Veterans Voices. A century after a northeastern Pennsylvania native fought in World War I, his battlefield experience is coming to light. He left behind a treasure trove of personal artifacts from his role in the Great War. Eyewitness News reporter Mark Hiller gives us a glimpse into history. Uh, this is a listing of his military service. Spread out on a table and faded by time are the contents that make up a soldier's story from World War I. I'm wearing gloves because this is 100 years old. It's very fragile. George Brown uncovered the materials in a shoebox while clearing out his late mother-in-law's home. The military memorabilia belonged to Brown's grandfather through marriage. When uh, Clarence Miller fought in World War I, he kept this diary on his person. Miller was 21 years old when in 1917 he became one of the first volunteers from his hometown of Wilkesbury to enlist in the Army during the Great War, later called World War I. The Germans immediately throwed over a barrage over our boxes. The diary captured the heroism of Miller and his fellow soldiers while fighting the enemy on the front lines in France. And I think about this often, what he went through as a young man. While the diary is the centerpiece of Miller's personal war experience, it's far from the only highlight. Among the memorabilia is Miller's monthly soldier's pay book. And it shows that he was paid $36.60. There's also a map of France spanning areas where Miller fought. And there's a pen pal letter. At the price of great sacrifice, you loved our France. It's written by a French woman who sent it to Miller after the war ended. France appreciates everything you have done in helping her to save her country. Brown hopes we all share appreciation for men like Private First Class Miller. It just amazed me, and it, it, it still does. For Veterans Voices, Mark Hiller, Eyewitness News. Brown says he hopes to donate those items to a museum. This is your father's Purple Heart. A Purple Heart and a Bronze a Star are two of the highest military honors. Many of those and other awards are sitting unclaimed in Harrisburg at the Treasury Department. 
Back in May, a Purple Heart and Bronze Star were presented to the family of U.S. Army veteran James Timoney of Hazleton by Pennsylvania State Treasurer Joe Torsella. Timoney served in World War II. He was wounded by German gunfire in 1944 and awarded a Purple Heart and Bronze Star for his sacrifice and service. The medals were put in a security box at the bank. He and his wife passed away and they were sent to the Treasury Department in Harrisburg. Many medals of honor are still unclaimed and we've posted a search tool to look for forgotten medals on our website pahomepage.com. There's a museum dedicated to the woman who served our country in Monroe County. Yeah, the idea was actually born when one woman veteran felt there was little information about women's contributions to the military. Her story next. Eyewitness News is honoring those who served with Veterans Voices. Now imagine being a woman serving in the armed forces and every time you show your military ID, you get this question, where did your husband serve? One Army veteran turned her answer, my husband didn't serve, I did, into an idea that became a museum. Photojournalist Tom Gregory takes us to the Woman Veterans Museum and Military Family Services in Mount Pocono. I served uh, just about 30 years in the United States Army. I retired at the rank of a sergeant major. Uh, some of the places I've served is Iraq, Afghanistan, Kuwait. Well, the idea for this museum is to highlight and show that women served in the military and highlight some of the great women that have made changes in the military. The museum was open in June, June 8th. I, I love to say from conception to birth of the museum, it took us about five months. At first I said, we should name this museum the Wow Museum, because everyone that walks through the door always go about and go, wow. The cots have always been a sore point of contention. During my term, I used an Alice pack, which is like a metal framed backpack. It was a gut buster, it was horrible. But yes, I see it and I just remember long rucks and, and sweating and wishing it was over. The fact that we are able to commemorate the history of women throughout the military, throughout all the different branches, through all the different periods, I think is phenomenal. It's right here in my hometown. The rank on this uniform is actually a master sergeant. A lot of the things that are in the museum, some of them belong as my, from my um, time in the military. Some were donated by um, people in our community, family members. You'll see um, the different boots that we had. If you go around our doors, you'll see frames that highlight women and all their different accomplishments. You'll see the MREs, which is the meal that they eat while they're in, um, in the field. You actually had to open the top and drink. I came in here in July and I just took it as my baby, as my own. And ever since then, I love it. I'm learning so much things about women, women veterans, military, military people in general. I am so proud of, of, of the women that have served in the military and the family members who have, have helped to support them. The museum is free, but donations are accepted. It's open on Fridays from 3 to 6 p.m., Saturdays and Sundays from 12 to 4, and by appointment. And we certainly have more stories about veterans to share with you on our website, pahomepage.com. Just click on Veterans Voices. We hope you enjoyed our presentation of Veterans Voices. We certainly hope you learned something today and have a better appreciation for our veterans and the men and women who continue to serve our country. Thanks so much for joining us.